Hello, Internet. Today, we're going to have a look at the most important core component of your NLP pipeline, the data input pipeline, and there in particular for the tokenizer. And today, I would like to show you the Python code here on my Jupyter Lab for building a word piece tokenizer. So, the model that we use for our tokenizer is the word piece model. In the last video, I showed you the BPE model. And we built these models from scratch. And I've chosen this example because this is exactly how BERT has built its tokenizer. So, you know, they tokenizers serve one purpose and one purpose only to translate the text that you have, your input data, so that they can be processed by your deep learning machine learning model in NLP. And normally it is transformed into a tensor presentation. If you want to follow along, there is the Colab Research Notebook you can download and go along with me. So first we start by instantiating a tokenizer object with a model. Then we set its normalizers, its pre-tokenizer, the post-processing and the decoder attributes. And you are familiar, I've showed this already to you in our last video. But again, here in H3, we have the normalization, H31, the pre-tokenization, the train, now the tokenizer model. And remember, this is the tokenizer model. This is not our deep learning model for BERT. We are here in the input pipeline, in the data input pipeline, where we convert our sentences into tensors. And this tensor presentation is based on a vocabulary. And to choose the right vocabulary, this is our main task why we do all of this. And then we have some post-processing where we have some special tokens inserted, and then we can feed it to our deep learning network. So here we go, word piece. What the hell is a word piece and how does it differ from the PC I showed you last time? Now, the word piece algorithm is a sub-word tokenization algorithm. So it divides the words. And it's quite similar to BPE, and it is used mainly by Google in models like BERT. So if you have a BERT model in your repertoire, hey, this is what it is. You have a word piece tokenizer. It uses a greedy algorithm that tries to build long words first, and then splitting it in multiple shorter tokens. And when this happens, when the entire word does not exist in the vocabulary. And this is quite different from the other one, who starts at the exact opposite. It starts from single characters and it goes on building longer and longer token the more you iterate over BP. So uh, yeah, also if you have a look at the prefix, you have the hash hash prefix to identify the tokens that are part of the word, the second part or the third part of the word, not starting a word. If you have the very first token of a word, you do not have the hash hash prefix. And you might say, hey, why I need a new and improved tokenizer? There are so many pre-trained tokenizers, and you're right. But because transformer models very often use subword tokenization, they need to be trained in particular to identify the parts of words that are often present in the corpus of the text. So if you have, let's say, your task is you, you scan the medical literature or the jurisdiction literature, and you have all your sentences with highly unusual words that are not commonly seen in the Facebook commentaries or on Twitter, then you need to train your tokenizer, your input data pipeline to your deep learning model exactly that you have an optimal subword tokenization going on. And then your model will even perform better. So we are right at the start. Data input pipeline. Okay, word piece model. The first step, and we're here to code, is when we do some real time coding, is that we import different uh, from the library, from the tokenizer library of Hugging Face. We import our models, our normalizers, our pre tokenizers, our past processes, the trainers, and of course, we need a tokenizer. And here, the tokenizer, we choose a model. And of course, since I told you we're going to use the word piece model for BERT, we choose here the word piece model as a tokenizer. And here we have to specify one special token. And this is the unknown token 
because whenever this model encounters some strings it doesn't know, it has no idea what it is, it has to special flag this. And this is why we have the UNK token. Other arguments can be, can be set here, include the vocabulary of your model, yes, and the maximum input characters per word, and the maximum length for each word, and whatever. So, first step, you see here, 831, normalization. As always, when we define a new tokenizer, we have a recipe. Four steps. First, normalization. Normalization is the cleaner. Think about it as a cleaner. And in the case of BERT, you, because it's so popular, you have already, if you download it from Hugging Face Normalizer, you have a BERT normalizer. A very specific BERT normalizer, where all the different things are already programmed in for you. So let's have, see, you can say lowercase is true, you can clean the text, you can handle the Chinese characters, let's say false, because I will only feed them in English uh, text. You can strip the accent, a French accent, for example. You can say, yes, please strip all my accent, I want plain English text. Or if you have not uh, the specific BERT normalizers and you want to build your own normalizer that is not already pre-trained in the Hugging Face tokenizer library, you can do your own. And I show you here in the next P. Oh, sorry, let's execute this. That you can see it's quite fast. Uh, in the next piece here, we have now a normalizer. And here for a standard do-it-yourself normalizer, we define a sequence with specific characteristics. And my characteristics is I want to have a normalizer that has an Unicode normalization. Then I want to have a normalizer just for lowercase. And then I want to have strip all my French or whatever accents. One. And if you want to verify this code, and we say tokenizer normalize, and this is our tokenizer now, and then you apply the string to it, and you see, hello, how are you? Let's put some, some additional white spaces in there, that you can see that the white spaces will stay. Because I only have NFD, lowercase, and strip the accents. And so this is the result that we get, and you see the white spaces are still there. Therefore, we need a pre-tokenizer some preparation before we really start. And you have normally the white space and the punctuation functions built into this. Now, of course, you have here a pre-tokenizer, the BERT pre-tokenizer specific, but also if you want to build your own, no problem at all. Let's just run this. You see, even on my old uh, laptop, no problem at all. And we have here now our pre-tokenizer, our BERT pre-tokenizer. And this is my sentence I put in, just to show you. Quantum coherence could be based on a probability internal quantum field. And you see here, you have all my punctuation and also all the other different words that it could recognize. Note that the pre-tokenizer not only splits the text into words, but keeps the offsets. And you see exactly the position of each character in this string Quantum, the first word, goes from 0 to 7. Coherence goes from 8 to 17. This offset is important, and we'll see later on why, for the token classification on question answering. Or we can build it from scratch. If you do not want to have your BERT pre-tokenizer, and you want to define your own tokenizer, well, easy. You can split it on white spaces, and you will have your punctuation uh, put out for you. So let's have a look at this when we have these two sequence ports. And this is a test sentence for the new pre tokenizer. Beautiful. There's no more. The, the white spaces are gone, and the punctuation, you can clearly see the dash and the full stop. So next up, 833, we train now our tokenizer model. And please, this is only the model for the tokenizer, because what we want is we want to have the optimum tokens, the optimum configured vocabulary for our text conversion to tensors. Okay, so now we train our tokenizers. And we use the word piece trainer that's from Hugging Face, a specific word piece trainer, which is beautiful. You remembered we download already trainers. 
And within trainers, we have a word piece trainer. And now we see our vocabulary size should be 25,000 tokens. And the special tokens that I have to define, since it's BERT, you know, BERT was trained especially on masking, specific words in, uh, specific, yeah, words in a sentence. And then we have the unknown special token. And then, of course, padding. If we have sentences with not equal length, you have to do the padding to bring it all up to the same length in words. And then you have you more or less your classification, specific tokens, and your separated token. Because BERT is also the second task was if you have two sentences, one sentence follows the other. Tell me if this is based on your training data, the right second sentence to follow the first sentence. So you have the CLS and the separator token task. Now that you defined it, you can also, and this, let's execute this. Oh, I'm talking so much, I forget to execute it. That you can now even go in deeper and you say, hey, I want to have a minimum frequency of words or a number of token, number of times a token must appear to be included in the vocabulary. So if you have, I don't know, uh, atoms, and you have not at least two times the token atoms happening in your text, it will not be included in your vocabulary. So only words that, you can set it also to zero, no problem at all. But then you get a lot of words that only happen once in your data set, in your input data set, and maybe this is not the optimal training if your vocabulary size then you have to put to 40,000, 45,000. So therefore, let's say a minimum frequency two. If a token happens two times, then please include it in my specific vocabulary for this word piece organization. Of course, we need some input text and we are here happy that uh, Hugging Face also have this data set uh, library. So just we import a very small wiki text library. And we say, okay, this is our data set. And you see here we have the features of 36,000 rows of text. And then if you say, okay, how does it look like? Well, it's a wiki text. So therefore you have some heading and then you have uh, some sentences explaining whatsoever. This is great. Since I'm working here on a small laptop, I have to batch a little bit. And so, so to split up my input, I have not so much memory. And I say my batch size is about thousand, whatever is fitted for your personal machine, just adjust it. And then we can start finally now to train our tokenizer model. Our word piece tokenizer model, now it is training. And as you can see, it's quite fast and in two seconds it is done. So now we have a new tokenizer, we have our batch iterator and we have our trainer defined. You remember our trainer here was the word piece trainer with 25k maximum vocabulary size, minimum frequency was two and our special tokens since it's part we have defined in this line here. So here we are, this is it. Now you can say, hey, are you sure? This, this in two seconds you have a new tokenizer. Well, yeah, it's a small amount of, of training text, of course, but let's verify it. And you have, I have here a sentence. Now I have trained the tokenizer model. Again, not the bird transformer model, but the tokenizer model, don't mix it up. And if I encode now these tokens, you see that I get now I have trained the, okay, tokenizer, it doesn't know the word tokenizer, therefore, BERT, it splits it up in three word pieces. So to begin with toke and then hash hash any and hash hash ser, tokenizer. And this is now, these are three parts now of our, it, uh, that the text has been analyzed since tokenizer itself is not part of our vocabulary. Model not the bird transformer. Ah, transform it knows. Transformer model. It doesn't know the er. So we have the, the basic, the root form to transform, transformer. If you are doing a lot of computer coding, I think it would be good if you have transformer in your vocabulary in that complete way. 
Encoding obtains an encoding which contains all the NASA output for the token NASA, the IDS, the type IDS, the tokens, these are the tokens we're looking at, the offsets, I showed you, showed you the offsets before, the attention mask, and the special token mask, and the overflowing, you know all of this. Now, last step, 834, post-processing. Now that the tokenizer is trained, we can define the post-processor. Now come that we have to add the special tokens. The CLS, the classification token at the beginning, and the separated token at the end for single sentences, or, since Bird is trained for two-sentence configuration, a separator token. And there is a template processing that helps us with this. I don't want to go into this, it's very easy. And I executed all the codes, yes! <laughs> and now we have uh, our two special tokens. And you, now you do the template processing and you can check that it really worked. And now you have here the sentence. And I have here my two sentences, be as simple as possible only. Then will you truly understand whatever you're talking about? So we see here we have our classification token at the start and we have our separator token at the end. And since it's two sentences, we have a separator token here. This is our encoding these are our tokens. And of course, you can have a look at the IDS. And you see here for the second sentences, yeah, first sentence, second sentence. So we know we have two sentences. And the last piece is the decoder. Yeah, you can put it back in the original form. And if you're decoding, this is again the sentence we started off, be as simple as possible, only then will you truly understand. And of course, since we have here the normalization, this is all uh, in, in lower characters. Okay. You can then, this is the last part I would say, you can then save your new tokenizer into a single JSON file like this. You just say tokenizer, this is your new take tokenizer, you're trained, you have all the special tokens in there, and you say save to da -da -da, JSON file. Great. And if you want to reload it, nothing easier, you have tokenizer.from file, and then you specify your JSON file, and this should be it. Now this is great because now you have a new specific tokenizer that really fits very well with your input data. So if you're working, I don't know, on a specific subject like mathematics or physics or, or pharmaceutical industry, you need a very special vocabulary for your specific text. Therefore, this new tokenizer. And now we want to use this new tokenizer, nothing easier than this. We have now a specific new tokenizer class, and we want to, da -da 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 -da, to wrap it inside, wrap it inside a transformer object to be able to use it with the transformer library. More specific, we have to put it inside the class of tokenizer fast, fast tokenizer class corresponding to the model we want to use here. And we are using a word piece or a bird tokenizer. And this is the fast, you know, Rust. I showed you in my last video. So from transformers, we have bird tokenizer fast. And then we just say here that our tokenizer object, oops, not to move it, is our tokenizer that we trained here. This is our tokenizer. You can call it my tokenizer whatsoever. But now you have a new tokenizer and it can be used as a normal transformer tokenizer. You can save it, you could uh, pull it in the, in the Hugging Face Hub, whatever you want to do with it. Now, if you are building something this does not match with any class in Transformers, it doesn't match to BERT and you have specific, I don't know, tokens whatsoever. Okay, no problem, you can do it also. You just have a pre-tokenizer fast and then you have to define your tokens. Uh, specifically, like here, I did here. So, no problem if you build something very specific, special for your application. This is the way to do it. And yes, once you have a tokenizer, of course, you can directly pass your sentences, your data input pipeline to it, and you get back a dictionary that's ready to feed into your 
BERT onto your deep learning model. And now we are there. The data input pipeline is clean, beautiful. We have tensors because, you know, because the, the BERT model needs tensors. Transformer models only accept tensors as input data. And nothing easier than this. So we have here our sentence. And then we say, I have defined my new tokenizer, or you reloaded it from your file, whatever. And then you have you know, your data, and I have here one sentence, and my sentence is in quantum mechanics, a probability amplitude is a complex number using and describing the behavior of systems. And I say, okay, and I want to have a return it in a, in a tensor. I told you we need tensors for the input of our deep learning model, for our transformer model, for our BERT model in this particular case. And I say, hey, give it back to me in TensorFlow. Of course, you can have a PyTorch. And this new tokenizer is not defined. This is great. Okay, I did not. Yes, you're right. I did not execute this cell here. And therefore, it is not at all. Yes, here we are. So we have now a new tokenizer with the sentences. So this is our TensorFlow representation of our input data tensor. So let's have a look at it. We have our input IDs. This is a TensorFlow tensor with the shape 137 because we have 37 tokens. And we have this specific ID encoding of all our word pieces in all our sentences of all our documents. This is it. Very simple example. And then, of course, you have the token type IDS 37, and you have a NumPy array that's defined here. You have our attention mask, I showed you in my last video. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And then you can have, then it, this is the input, the encoded input. And then you define, of course, a model. And to make things easy, I define here a TensorFlow BERT model, a BERT base model uncased. So yeah, we could, yeah, to, a distilled BERT would also be possible, but let's go with a BERT model, no problem at all. Uh, the architecture contains only the base transformer model, given some inputs, the outputs will what we call hidden states, also known as features. And for each model input, our tensors, we will receive a high-dimensional vector representing the contextual understanding of that input by the transformer model. And this is easy now. We defined our predefined uh, BERT model. And now let's have a look what we have here. Transformer, model, BERT, TF, TensorFlow. Great. You can do the same, of course, in PyTorch. And then now comes the final, the main part, where I say, I have my model defined. And I have now my encoded uh, input in tensors, in TensorFlow tensors. And now I'm ready to do the calculation, calculate the output. And this is why we have done all of this to get the output of this. And here we are. And you say, yippee, this is it. So let's have a look at the output. We have the last hidden state of our defined model, whatever it is, however you define your BERT model, how many hidden layers you want, how many transformers, whatever you define, the last hidden state here has the shape 137, 768, 768 are the hidden dimensions per default. And then you have your NumPy array, okay, yes, uh, I think we can uh, think this is okay. Well, you can then ask the shape I just showed you. And if you want to have now, uh, if you know exactly what to look for, is our output here. And then we have a tensor for all our 37 uh, tokens, for our 37 elements of our input data. And we have a, a representation in a 768 dimensional space. So we have here, for each of our 37 elements, 100, uh, 768 dimensional vector, if you want to imagine it in this way, if we do not like the uh, more complex tensor notation. So this is it. This is what we are looking for. And from here on, you just go on, you train your model, you have your optimizer, your atom, and you have your scheduler, whatever your training elements are, your warm up period is. 
And then you just train whatever you like to train, the way you, you know it. And yeah, what's very nice here is something from Hugging Face. I would like to show this to you. This is originally from Hugging Face documentation about this um, uh, tokenizer structure. So what we have done until now, we have our model input. And then we have the embeddings, we have the different layer and the hidden states, and the hidden states contain the information what we are looking for, the different weights. And then we have a particular task, a different, a specific head. And this head will give us the output of our task, and we will receive the final output. And in our example here, we have a classification. So is it good or bad? Is it whatever, I don't know, white or black or whatever you want to classify? Uh, this is it. Again, here, Hugging Face Court, Static Chapter 2. And, yeah, I think we know all of this right now. For example, we would need a model with a sequence classification head. So our head here will be sequence classification to be able to classify the sentence. We have just two uh, uh, topics, positive or negative. So how to code this? This is easy. Again, we go in our Hugging Face Transformer library. We import the auto model for sequence classification. Since we have a classification task, we find in the different models, there's a distilled bird base uncased fine-tuned SST to English uh, model. We load this model for our sequence classification from our pre-trained this here. And then we just say, okay, Let's apply to this specific model our encoded input. And it should be, yes, I only have two sentences. It should have the shape one, two. Now, if you want to have the post-processing, you remember our model predicts a two-dimensional two vector for the first sentences and also a two-dimensional vector for the second one. And those are still not probabilities, but you know, we call it logits. Those are the raw, unnormalized scores outputted by the last layer of our BERT model. And to convert this now to the probabilities, zero or one or yes or no, whatever you have, binary probabilities in our case, they need to go to a softmax layer or whatever uh, uh, function you would like to use. So to generally an activation function, whatever ReLU function you would like to have here. And here we have a softmax function. And yeah, switch to PyTorch. No, I, I just want to show you this code. If, yeah, you can have PyTorch switch, of course, but it is very easy. You have now your output, your logits, and then you just say, this is now my input to my softmax function. And then I get my predictions, my probability, 0, 1, yes, no, black, white, whatever you want to have classified, this is it. And then you just check, hey, what is it? The label with cells 0 is, I don't know, a positive connotation, and 1 will be a negative connotation. This information you will get here, and this is the whole model. So I hope this video showed you how to construct your specific word piece tokenizer for your specific BERT model in NLP. And this was it for today. I hope I see you in the next video.